Well, God bless. This is reading number three. Colossians chapter three. I read out of the Amplified Version. And I have all kinds of different versions, but I read. My reading time is Amplified Version. By the way, I love you all. I hope you have a great day, and if you're not having a good day, I hope your day gets better. May the peace of God that surpasses all understanding be with you today. In Jesus' name, amen. So we have Colossians chapter 3. It's entitled, Put on the New Self. Therefore, if you have been raised with Christ to a new life, sharing in His resurrection from the dead... Keep seeking the things that are above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind and keep focused habitually on the things above, the heavenly things, not on the things that are on earth, which have only temporarily temporal value. For you died to this world, and your new real life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. So put to death and deprive of power the evil longings of your earthly body for its sensual self-centered instincts, immorality, impurity, sinful passion, evil desire, and greed, which is a kind of idolatry because it replaces your devotion to God. Because these sinful things, the divine wrath of God, is coming on the sons of disobedience, those who fail to listen and who routinely and abstinently disregard God's precepts. And in these sinful things you also once walked, when you were habitually living in them without the knowledge of Christ. So now you know. But now rid yourself completely of all these things, anger, rage, malice, slander, and obscene, abusive, filthy, vulgar language from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, for you have stripped off the old self with its evil practices, and have put on the new spiritual self, who is being continually renewed in true knowledge in the image of him who created the new self, a renewal in which there is no dis distinction between Greek and Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, nor between nations, whether barbarian or Scythian, nor in status, whether slave or free, but is all and in all, so believers are equal in Christ without distinction. So as God's own chosen people who are holy, set apart, sanctified for his purpose, and well beloved by God himself, put on a heart of compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, which has the power to endure whatever injustice and unpleasantness comes with good temper. Bearing graciously with one another and willingly forgiving each other, there it is, forgiving the basis of faith right there, each other in one has a cause for complaint against another. Just as the Lord has forgiven you, so should you forgive. I know it's a hard one, but forgiveness is a must. Beyond all these things, put on and wrap yourselves in unselfish love, which is the perfect bond of unity, for everything is bound together in agreement with each one who seeks the best for others. Let the peace of Christ, the inner calm of one who walks daily with him, be the controlling factor in your hearts, deciding and settling questions that arise. To this peace, indeed, you were called as members in one body of believers. 
and be thankful to God always. Let the spoken word of Christ have its home within you, dwelling in your heart and mind, permeating every aspect of your being as you teach spiritual things and admonish and train one another with all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. Whatever you do, no matter what it is, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus and in dependence on Him, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. Family Relations Wives, be subject to your husbands out of respect for their position as protector and their accountability to God. Only respect them when they're account with their accountability to God for their accountability to God. There's a lot there. If it's not a godly man, you're in the wrong relationship. No matter what, you don't submit or respect to that. As is proper and fitting in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives with affectionate sympathy. Selfless love that always seeks the best for them. And do not be embittered or resentful toward them. Because of the, because of the responsibilities of marriage. Children, obey your parents as God's representatives in all things. For this attitude of respect and obedience is well-pleasing to the Lord and will bring you God's promised blessings. Fathers, do not provoke or irritate or exasperate your children with demands that are trivial or unreasonable or humiliating or abusive, nor by favoritism or indifference. Treat them tenderly with loving kindness. So they will not lose heart and become discouraged or unmotivated with their spirit, with their spirits broken. Servants in everything, obey those who are your masters on earth, not only with external service, as those who merely please people, but with sincerity of heart because of your fear of the Lord. Whatever you do, whatever your task may be. Work from the soul, that is, put in your very best effort as something done for the Lord and not for men, knowing with all certainty that it is from the Lord, not from men. What you receive, you, that you will receive the inheritance which is your greatest reward. It is the Lord Christ whom you actually serve. For he who does wrong will go punished for his wrongdoings. And with God there is no per partiality, no special treatment based on a person's personal life. So that concludes the three readings for the day. I hope and pray the message that needs to be heard here has been heard. And I love you all. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen.